Yeah, uh, I mean, again, same question here, Steve, where, look, we know what the result was. Every poll, I mean, even when the essential poll was forced to start actually acknowledging that uh, that the yes, no, and the hard no, and all the rest of it, they tried a million ways to find a way to tell us that momentum was still with yes. It was very obvious where this was, this was going, yet he pushed on. He could have split the question, he could have pulled up, and he could have said, look, I'm, pull, I'm, st I'm stopping now and I'm moving the 450 to double everything that we just did in the federal budget. He could have done that, but he didn't because you know what he was playing for and so do I, a place in history. Yeah, you go to the heart of it because, I mean, when we look back on this referendum, as we do with all referendums historically, what we're going to find is the hubris of the Prime Minister on the night when he won the election and said he would introduce the Uluru Statement from the heart in full has divided the country. Now, what sort of Prime Minister wants on his CV the fact that he ran a referendum, that he believed that he could win? And if he thought he could win on Saturday night still, then he's sillier than what I think he is. But he's divided the country. He turned it into a bitter argument. I mean, luckily for me, I missed four weeks of it because I was out of the country. <laughs> but it just divided Australia. It turned us into a bitter argument uh, that never needed to be had. And, you know, Matt Canavan knows better than anyone else that... You know, places like Queensland. The, the result in Queensland was extraordinary. The result in South Australia. You remember when Noel Pearson and Anthony Albanese went to South Australia and said, well, South Australia is where we can win this. Well, South Australians are not stupid. They voted 60-40 like the rest of the country and said they didn't want a bar of it. I mean, this comes back to that argument, Paul, that you've made in the weeks before I went away, that Australians don't want to be lectured to by the elites. And who the hell in the Yes campaign felt that it was a good idea to get the four big banks on side to start telling people to vote yes? These are the same yeah. banks quite... that are crushing people with interest rate payments on their mortgages that they can't afford to make. Yeah, by the way, can I just make this just, just, just while we're in the middle of the conversation, you just mentioned Qantas. Could somebody please explain to me how this business that's already in its PR uh, world of pain, that it made a $2 billion profit when it's picking people up out of Israel, is dropping them off in London or in Dubai and not actually flying them all the way home for free, all right? Like, well, just get to the nearest port, stop, see you later, and buy a ticket for the rest of the way home. Simple PR advice for Qantas, which is fill it's the plane there. and come back to Australia, all right? And as many people who want it, and if, they, and if, if, God forbid, there's a way people can find their way out of Gaza, that'd be great too. Let's just keep those flights coming for free for Australians. But, of course, no, no, we're the national carrier who will take you somewhere else and then force you to buy a ticket to actually get back to Australia. Fair dinkum. Anyway... Corey, multiple question here, but here we go. Albo's yes bubble, it was popped hard. You saw him fight and bitch and moan and try to find a different multiple ways out of it, passive-aggressive call-outs of the media that he doesn't like. We know that they'll punish, uh, they'll punish those media outlets by going after the misinformation bill. Um, but also... I can't go past what he said today. Well, I am committed to the post uh, what, what I am committed to post the referendum is respecting what Indigenous people have said, and what they have said is that they're undertaking a week which is reasonable for them to deal with for what many people, regardless of what white people voted in this referendum, blah 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 blah. Now. How long before that official transcript will get changed to uh, while people or what people voted? We all heard it. That's the transcript. Um, how long before that gets changed? Now, I suspect it's been changed as we speak, Paul. Um, there's a huge problem here, and for a very long time, the Australian people have been made to feel ashamed if they're not, you know, part of some minority group, if they're not fully signed up to, to pagan rituals or, or ancient traditions, I mean, rather than some of the more modern traditions that have made this country. And Matt Canavan's absolutely right. The Prime Minister would not have gone down this path if he didn't think he was going to win. And so I think he goes down as the John Hewson of the Labor Party. He's lost the unlosable election. He's lost it in a, in a manner which is uh, almost unfathomable to the, to the left, who thought they had this moral virtue there. And part of the blame has to go with his choice of Linda Burney, who oh. is a clearly an incompetent minister. She has no capacity to even sell her brief that she was tasked with one single thing, one thing, and she couldn't answer a single question, nor could the PM. These people are hopeless. I think they're incredibly lazy. They're doing a huge disservice to Australia. And now they've got the temerity, or the Prime Minister does, to suggest white people are the problem here. Wow. Well, it's not, we're not the problem, let me tell you. The problem is the politicians who refuse to acknowledge 
the true disadvantage and the Aboriginal industry that has been taking advantage of the billions that flows their way, the first one to the trough gets all the spoils and there's very little that flows on to those who truly need it.